Hi there, John Wilkinson again and History Made Easier. This is going to be the first of two videos that look at the rise to power of Hitler. In this video, I'm going to look at the role played by the elites, either unwittingly or deliberately. And I've got a, a list here that I've made in order to prepare for this video. And it's a longer list than I expected to make. And so I'm going to glance to it because I don't want to miss anything off. Uh, because I'm quite surprised by just how much the elites were involved. And you can make good capital out of this in an exam question. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of Weimar. When immediately the elites did everything they could to undermine Weimar. Don't forget the stab in the back myth. Right from the very beginning, the elites were, were picking away to undermine Weimar. And of course, we have the cap punch in that early period as well. Then I'll jump forward to 1923 and more familiar territory for you with the role of the judge in Hitler's trial following the Munich Beer Hall Putsch. Now remember, this is a trial of somebody who had attempted to overthrow the government. And yet the judge gave Hitler the platform he had craved for a national platform with every word that he said and the judge allowed him to speak for hours on end. Um, every word reported in the press. He was allowed to interrupt the prosecution uh, whenever he so chose to. And of course he was given the most lenient of sentences. So, the, the, the trial of Hitler in 1923. And then we have this whole period of presidential government that was really the end of Weimar. Weimar didn't end with, the, with Hitler coming to power. Weimar had already ended. Weimar as a, as a democratic experiment in German history. That had ended with president, presidential government from Brüning to Schleicher to von Papen. And then, of course, right at the very end, we have the palace intrigue with Schleicher and von Papen intriguing against each other, trying to uh, persuade Hindenburg to go this way, to go that way until we finally get von Papen um, getting Hindenburg to agree to appointing Hitler as Chancellor. We have the March 1933 election and then we have that, that really speedy period of consolidation of power. We have the decree for the protection of people and state. We have the Enabling Act. And we have Gleichschaltung. All of this, the elites allow Hitler to get away with. They allow this to happen. Remember, Hindenburg is still president. And then, finally, we have the Night of the Long Knives. And... Hitler connives with the army in planning and carrying out the Night of the Long Knives. And following the murder, and that's what it was, following the murder of his rivals in the Nazi party, President Hindenburg um, congratulates him and applauds him for what he had done. So does the army. And so we see right from the beginning of Weimar 
to the point where Hitler has well and truly consolidated power, we see the elites conniving, scheming, playing their part, unwittingly to begin with, but <laughs> deliberately at the end, helping Hitler to achieve power and to consolidate that hold on power. I think it's a very interesting perspective that you guys could well make use of if you get the right exam question. So I hope that was useful for you. And as always, I thank you for listening. Cheers.